Hi folks, uh, I am Dr. Santi Dyer and uh, today we're going to do part three of the series of uh, the reviews of uh, medical biochemistry and uh, part three deals with uh, the TCA cycle. But before we get into the cycle, uh, there are a number of questions that I want you to consider uh, when listening to the lecture and you can go back to these uh, questions and see if you can figure out the answers because a lot of these will be very relevant to uh, uh, the questions you might be asked in uh, medical biochemistry or in your step, uh, step one exams for the board exam. Okay, so uh, we're going to start off with a TCA cycle which obviously means a tri carboxylic acid cycle, also known as the, uh, the Krebs cycle. And um, let's first consider these questions, okay? Uh, remember that parts one and two, we dealt with the glycolysis pathway, and that, of course, feeds into the TCA cycle. So question one, in alcoholic patients, uh, why is uh, the vitamin thiamine administered prior to a glucose infusion? Uh, so second question, which TCA intermediate is most likely to accumulate in an alcoholic patient? Okay. Third question, which TCA intermediate is most likely to accumulate in a patient with iron deficiency? Fourth question is, which enzyme can most likely contribute to hyperglycemia in a diabetic patient? Okay. So take a look at these questions when you're studying and see if you can figure out the answers uh, after having listened to my presentation. Okay, so you'll recall that in part two of the, uh, of the series, I uh, dealt with glycolysis and we ended up with uh, a three carbon molecule, pyruvate. Uh, and of course those carbons uh, were originally part of the glucose molecule. Now, um, under aerobic conditions, uh, the pyruvate will enter the mitochondrion uh, where it is converted to acetyl coenzyme A. And of course, the acetyl group uh, contains two carbons, and this obviously implies that in the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A, we lose one carbon uh, in the form of carbon dioxide. And we, of course, we call this a decarboxylation reaction. Now, this uh, uh, conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA is catalyzed by an enzyme complex known as PDH or pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And this is an enzyme complex consisting of three enzymes, which requires a number of cofactors. And one of these cofactors uh, is uh, the vitamin thiamine. And so this enzyme is uh, very dependent on thiamine. In the absence of thiamine, um, uh, such as you would get in, uh, in a, uh, an alcoholic patient, then the conversion of uh, pyruvate to acetyl-CoA would uh, be significantly impeded and we'd get uh, lesser amounts of acetyl-CoA being formed. But um, as is characteristic of a dehydrogenase reaction, uh, you have a cofactor. In this case, we have NAD plus being reduced to NADH plus H plus, And of course, this will yield... Uh, a lot of energy and when it enters complex one of the electron transport chain. Okay, so uh, remember that these two carbons from acetyl-CoA were originally present in the glucose molecule and now um, the acetyl coenzyme A will now enter the uh, TCA cycle by condensing with a four carbon compound oxaloacetate leading to the formation of citrate or citric acid which is a six carbon compound. So let's take a look at the TCA cycle. Okay, so uh, there's acetyl coenzyme A. Uh, bear in mind those two carbons in the acetyl group. Uh, we will follow the fate of those two carbons. So, as I said to you, the acetyl, -CoA, uh, the acetyl group condenses with oxaloacetate to form citrate, which is a six carbon compound. And this is catalyzed by the enzyme citrate synthase, which is regulated by uh, ATP and ADP, etc. Um, so in a high energy state uh, where there's lots of ATP, the reaction would be uh, significantly uh, decreased. But anyway, after citrate is formed, uh, it's acted upon by an enzyme called aconitase to form an intermediate called cis-aconitase which in turn is again converted by the same enzyme aconitase to isocitrate. 
Now, uh, from uh, your medical biochemistry perspective, what I need to emphasize to you is that this enzyme, aconitase, is dependent on iron. It is iron dependent, and uh, so in other words, uh, in iron deficiency, uh, uh, this enzyme's activity would be significantly reduced. Okay. Uh, so once isosaturate is formed, uh, it is converted to alpha ketoglutarate. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have a de another decarboxylation reaction and the generation of NADH from NAD+. And of course this NADH will also enter complex one of the electron transport chain. So we are now left with an intermediate called alpha ketoglutarate, which is now a five carbon compound because we've lost one carbon uh, in the previous step. And so alpha ketoglutarate, please remember, is the only five carbon compound in the TCA cycle. So alpha ketoglutarate is converted to succinyl coenzyme A in the next step uh, with the uh, formation again of NADH. We have another decarboxylation reaction uh, in this uh, step. Uh, and this um, Conversion of alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA is carried out by an enzyme called alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Now, I'd like you to remember the name of this enzyme, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, and the reason I emphasize that is that this enzyme is also dependent on the vitamin thiamine. Okay, so that's why I've, I've, uh, we've dealt with two enzymes that are thiamine dependent. Okay, so keep that in mind. And um, you'll also notice that on either side of alpha ketoglutarate we have a decarboxylation reaction. Okay, and remember again that these uh, um, carbons uh, were originally part of the glucose molecule, and they're now being lost as carbon dioxide. Okay, so suc the succinyl part of coenzyme A now only has four carbons. The succinyl CoA is converted to succinate which in turn is converted to fumarate by the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. Um, now you'll notice that instead of NAD, in this particular reaction we use FAD, uh, which picks up the two hydrogens from succinate to form FADH2. FADH2, as I will show you in uh, part four of this series, uh, will enter complex two of the electron transport chain. Now this enzyme, succinate dehydrogenase, is a very important enzyme because when we do the electron transport chain, I will point out to you that this enzyme is in fact complex 2 of the electron transport chain. Okay, succinate dehydrogenase. So the resulting product here is fumarate, which is converted to malate by fumarase. The malate in turn uh, is acted upon by malate dehydrogenase with the generation of NADH which will again will enter complex one of the electron transport chain. And this results in the formation of the four carbon compound of xaloacetate. Okay. Now what I want to point out to you is that the, the two carbons originally present in the acetal group of acetal coenzyme A are still present in the xaloacetate. They haven't left. So I often liken this to a very busy airport with uh, jumbo jets landing every 30 seconds and on the other side jumbo jets taking off every 30, 30 seconds. Essentially what happens is that we add on these carbons and they remain here but in the next cycle the next acetyl group will be added onto oxaloacetate and the carbons below that will leave as carbon dioxide. So uh, you need to understand this to appreciate the TCA cycle and, and how it operates in, uh, in oxidizing uh, these molecules uh, to eventually give us carbon dioxide and water. Right? Now, uh, these intermediates of the TCA cycle are very attractive molecules, and I mean attractive uh, to other pathways, uh, which uh, will utilize these intermediates to synthesize very useful compounds uh, that the, the cell requires. Now, if these intermediates are constantly being removed by uh, other biosynthetic pathways, there is a danger that the TCA cycle will run out of intermediates and if the TCA cycle ceases to function, the cell will run out of ATP and uh, the cell will die. So uh, the, the cell has a backup system where it replenishes these intermediates by side reactions 
And these uh, side reactions are known as anaplerotic reactions. The word anaplerotic comes from the Greek word meaning to fill up. And so one such anaplerotic reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase. Okay? And what this enzyme does is that it condenses bicarbonate and pyruvate to form a four carbon compound of xaloacetate, which as you now know is an intermediate of the TCA cycle. And this pyruvate carboxylase enzyme, and please do not forget this, is dependent on a vitamin called biotin. <clears throat> the only people who have biotin deficiency are um, health fanatics who are in the habit of eating raw eggs. Raw eggs contain a protein called avidin, which irreversibly binds the biotin. And, and because of the absence of biotin, they are not able to carry out this reaction. And I'll show you the consequences of that in a, in a few seconds. So this oxaloacetate obviously uh, will replenish uh, the intermediates of the TCA cycle, but it also serves as a very important substrate for gluconeogenesis. And this is a pathway we will deal with in, in, uh, <coughs> in later parts of the series. But if you can consider this, if someone is dependent on gluconeogenesis for keeping their blood sugar uh, elevated, in the absence of biotin, this reaction uh, will not occur and therefore gluconeogenesis will be impaired and this could result in hypoglycemia uh, as a result of uh, biotin deficiency. So, so do keep that in mind. Uh, do not confuse this enzyme pyruvate carboxylase with acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase plays a very important role in fatty acid synthesis, I will deal with that in, in a later part, but that is, uh, this enzyme is often confused with uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase by students. Okay? Yeah, just uh, one important thing that comes to mind uh, is um, this acetyl-CoA enzyme may uh, Acetyl coenzyme A cannot go back to glucose. And the simple reason is that uh, acetyl CoA results from a decarboxylation reaction, which is an irreversible reaction. So we cannot convert acetyl CoA to glucose for that reason. Okay? <clears throat> so let's go back to uh, our questions and see if we are now in a position to address these. And I will uh, bring up some of these questions again when I do eventually get to giving you some practice questions. Okay, so in the question one, we dealt with an alcoholic patient. Um, and why do we need to give this patient thiamine prior to uh, glucose infusion? And uh, to answer that question, uh, Remember that uh, in an alcoholic patient, uh, the chances are very high that this patient will be uh, deficient in thiamine and therefore will not be able to convert the pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. So what happens in such a case? So what happens there is that the pyruvate levels will rise and the pyruvate will be converted to, uh, uh, to lactic acid or lactate. The lactate levels will uh, rise. Uh, to, to regenerate the NAD+. Plus. And uh, if you give uh, this patient uh, who is thiamine deficient, you give them more glucose, you'll get excessive amounts of pyruvate, which will result in high amounts of uh, lactate, leading to lactic acidosis. So you have to be very careful with administering glucose to patients who are thiamine deficient. That's why you have to administer thiamine prior to the glucose infusion. Um, okay, um, let's take a look at the next question. <coughs> uh, which TCA cycle uh, intermediate is most likely to accumulate in an alcoholic patient? So here again, when you see alcoholic patient, think thiamine uh, deficiency. Okay. <coughs> so I showed you that um, pyruvate dehydrogenase is uh, dependent on thiamine. Uh, if that um, patient is deficient in thiamine, the acetyl-CoA levels will be decreased and therefore less acetyl-CoA is likely to condense with oxaloacetate, which could possibly lead to 
decreased amounts of citrate. But remember that we're also receiving acetyl coenzyme A from fatty acid uh, oxidation, such as beta oxidation, uh, and uh, amino acid catabolism, etc. So that shouldn't be a major problem. But if you look down here, remember I told you that the enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is also an enzyme that is dependent on thiamine. If this enzyme were unable to function as a result of uh, decreased levels of thiamine, then alpha ketoglutarate uh, is likely to accumulate. Okay? Uh, it is likely to accumulate. Of course, it can be converted to glutamate, and glutamate can be converted to glutamine. Uh, we'll deal with that at the later stage. So the answer to that question then is that uh, the intermediate likely to accumulate in this patient is alpha ketoglutarate. Right? <clears throat> okay, question three uh, dealt with uh, um, yeah, uh, which uh, 